So beautiful. Well, Jordan, it's time. If you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. In title of my sermon this morning, you got me turned on there, I guess good. 2 Timothy chapter 4 is the preacher's charge. The preacher's charge. You know, I'm convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Bible contains the answers to all of life's problems. The Bible has the answer for the broken marriages. The Bible has the answer for raising kids. It has the instructions for finance, employment, politics, entertainment, and every other thing in life that you can possibly imagine. If you're depressed today, the Bible holds the key to freedom. If you are wounded today, the Bible is the first aid kit for your soul. Because of the word of God, it is quick and is powerful and is sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword. And because of all scripture is given by God and is profitable for you and for well-being, and profitable to Christian maturity, and because God has commanded that you be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the Bible must be the basis of any and all preaching that is done by the man of God. In our text, Paul is writing to a young preacher, a young man by the name of Timothy, a young man upon whom Paul had himself placed his hands upon as he adored, uh, ordained Timothy through the preaching of the gospel. 1 Timothy 4.14, it talks about it. And as Paul writes to Timothy, Paul tells him or, or knows that, the, the, that his time is drawing near uh, upon this earth, that life is becoming short for him. But before he leaves this world, before he goes, he wants Timothy to have a good understanding of what his calling and what his ministry are all about. And so therefore, Paul takes a pen in hand and he writes these verses as we look at today is our text again, 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 5. Well, I'm in the wrong place. Everything's going wrong today. I'm in Peter. I don't flip from there. I've been preaching out of there. You know when you panic, you can't find it? Here we go. Verses 1 through 5. It says in here, I charge thee before God, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves, teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Let us pray again. Father in heaven, we do thank you again for the day. We thank you for your blessings of life. We thank you again for this young man that we so love. It's been such a blessing to us each and every one. God, I pray for him and his ministry. I pray, Lord, that you guide his every footstep. Lord, and I pray, Father God, that you would just put a shield about him. Lord, because I know from this day forward, even more so, God, the devil is going to be out after him. The devil's attack will come from every direction. So therefore, God, I pray that he is on watch always. And Lord, I pray this hour, God, that you bless all that is done and all that is said in this service, Lord, in order to ordain this young man. Bless everyone that lays hands upon him. Bless everyone that has come, that's been praying for him. Lord, touch them, minister them too, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Preach the word. You know, it wasn't hard to find the titles. I looked in my Bible and I turned to first, uh, the Second Timothy there. In the very start, it says, preach the word. There's nothing more important than preaching the word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So my first point, preach the word. And that, that word preach means to herald. It, it is referring to a king's messenger. 
And there is no greater king than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is no greater king to be serving. There's no greater uh, a message. There's no greater privilege than that to be a, a messenger. One who goes out and heralds the message. Proclaiming the message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His word is to be sounded out. His voice is to be heard loud and clear. Why? Because he is an ambassador. And he is an ambassador that is not up for no negotiations, in other words. Yet we go and we proclaim the gospel and, and it's to be laid out as it is. Uh, and there's no watering it down. There's no sugarcoating it. We must share the gospel just as it is. We must give the king's message. Amen. If there was ever a time in history when there's a need for God's messengers to be heard, I believe it's today. As we look at the world and we, we look at the news today, we can so easily get so discouraged. As we look at the violence that's filling our streets, as we look at the hatred in the political realm and we ask why, I tell you why, it's because people don't know the God of this Bible. And they don't know the God of this Bible because they don't know this Bible. If our world and our nation would turn back to this Bible, things would change. And, and Brother Jordan, I want you to know you've been called to be a messenger. You've been called to be an ambassador to proclaim the word of God. Why? Because the world is so dark. You need to be heard and you need to be heard loud and clear. As the messenger of the king. The word refers to the whole counsel of the Bible too, not just parts. So the preacher's mandate is, is to be a man of the word, not, not of human philosophy, not of human wisdom, not of human education, but of unsearchable riches of Christ Jesus. The message is to be the word of God and it alone. God's man or God's men are called to stand in the gap and skillfully proclaim the word of God. It seems foolish to many, though, Jordan, I promise you. It seems foolish. It seems foolish to those who are lost, to those who need to come to repentance, to those who need to be saved and come into a deep relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And sometimes it even seems foolish to those who claim to be Christians, but they're not on the level they ought to be in a commitment to the Lord and Savior. If they were, they would not be foolish. Jordan, the world is bombarded with messages after messages of hope after hope. But above all those messages and above all the hopes that bombard the world, this is one and that is, that, that is more needed than any other. And that is the message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It supersedes all the other messages that the world has to proclaim. This is what the world needs to hear. Amen. Yes, it's an old book, but it's certainly not out of date, and it never will be. Right. And let me just share this with you, Jordan. I want you to know that we are not to preach a progressive uh, a, a mission, a message because God was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's never changed. He's never changed his mind about homosexuality or any other sin that is committed in our world today. God is still the same. It's a shame and sad that we see so many men stand in the pulpit now and they claim to be these progressive ministers. In other words, we progress with the time and God's word changes with the time. I heard a man even say, Jordan Lee, I said, uh, said uh, they asked him, said, do you believe that uh, same-sex marriage is okay? He said, well, yes. It says, says um, you know, people change and God changes with them. Oh, no, we don't. I've never heard such foolishness. God doesn't change. Above all the messages, this is the message that the world needs. It is the message of the Word of God. The Word of God offers the only lasting hope for anybody and for everybody. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Nothing will take the place of the preaching of the Word of God. Nothing. Not puppets, not ponies, not plays. Nothing will replace preaching. 
It is the means by which God had chosen to reach the world. It is the means in which God had been chosen to save man. So, brother, I tell you, preach it. Preach the word. Preach it. Be ready in season. The Bible tells us here in verse 2 to preach the word. Be, be, be in season, uh, be instant in season and out of season. The ideal here is that there will be times when preaching is easy and times when it's hard. I'm preaching a long time now, and I can attest to that. There will be times when, it, when it's fun, and there will be times when it's sheer drudgery. There will be times when the people are listening and when, and when they turn a deaf ear to the message. Many times I've left the pulpit, told my wife, said, man, the spirit was good. But there also have been times when I left the pulpit and I told my wife, I said, there was an evil spirit there today. And you'll find that out, Jordan, the more you preach. Not only you will understand and you'll feel that evil spirit, but you'll even feel from where it resonates from. I promise you. It's almost like you know it when it walks in the door. Regardless, though, regardless of how the wind blows, at a particular time, our calling is to preach the word. It means that we are to drudge on through whatever uh, the situation, whatever is happening. We are to preach the word. Stay focused and preach the word. The devil don't want you to be focused. The devil don't want you to be ordained. The devil don't want you to stand in any pulpit. I can tell you that now. And he'll do anything and everything to discourage you from ever doing so. But be ready. Be in your place and preach. No excuses. No whining. Just a heart that is ready to preach the moment that, that, that presents itself to you. Stand and stick to preaching no matter the circumstance, easy or difficult. Preach the truth at any time, whether it is popular or whether it's not. Preach the word. So I challenge you to preach it with passion, as you did this morning. Preach the word with passion. The Bible says there, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. But I'm telling you to preach the word for, with passion for the lost. Preach convicting messages. That word reprove means preach, uh, preaching that brings conviction. The kind of preaching that, that holds the bright light of the word against the darkness of sin, that exposes it for all what, for what all it is. Genuine biblical preaching exposes evil and brings conviction upon the hearts of lost people. The true preacher will expose sin as he carefully preaches the word of a loving God. Passionate preaching also confronts the sinner. That word reproof. While we I mean, reproof exposes the, the sinfulness of man, but that word rebuke exposes the sinfulness of the sinner. Look again what it says. Reprove and then rebuke. This is a personal side of preaching. Sin must be confronted before sinners will be convicted. God will use your preaching to confront sinners if you preach the whole counsel of the word of God. Our preaching must uh, be a warning to the sinner the danger of their sin. So preach with passion. Passion that reproves, passion that rebukes, but also passion that exhorts. So, so, so passionate preaching comforts too. It not only convicts, but it comforts. Exhort, that word exhort means to come alongside. It means to, to besiege and encourage. It's not enough to reprove and rebuke people. The minister must encourage and comfort and help and carry uh, that person to Christ. Never forget when you stand before a congregation that there have been uh, people that are listening who are broken. You'll never know what's listening to you, Jordan, when you preach the word. You never know what's going on in somebody's life any given Sunday. When you stand in that pulpit, anytime you're preaching the word, you never know the person and what they're going through. You never know. Never forget when you stand before the congregation, there's people who are hurting. So preach the word. 
It is to be the consuming passion of your life's call. But also preach it with compassion. That word long-suffering there means patience and endurance. So as you carry out your God-given ministry to, to confront sin, challenge the saints, and, and comfort the hurting, you must always keep in mind that you are still one of them. You are to walk with the people with the heart of a brother in Christ. So we must not become angry or, or, or exasperated with the people of God, even when they don't seem to respond to your preaching as you think they should. Now, I just want to tell you something, Jordan. Well, I've got up here and I preached, and I said, boy, that was a good. And walked out and nobody said a word. I left this pulpit and I said, that was about the sorriest message I ever preached. And people said, preacher, I really enjoyed that. You see, you just preach it and leave it in God's hands. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm being honest with you. You just share it and leave it in God's hands. He'll, he knows what the people need. And the last thing we need is a pat on the back. He's the one that gets all the pat on the back. Amen. He gets it all. We are to preach for him. We are to herald his message. We want eyes to be drawn to him, not on us. And God help us. We have to fight that flesh, George, because we want it to sometimes, you know. God help us. Be long-suffering, though. You are to love them like the Lord loves them. Cherish them. Charity suffers long and is kind, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. In other words, keep reproving and rebuking and exhorting even when, it don't, when they don't respond as you think they should. Just keep leading them through the green pastures and beside the still waters of the Word of God. Just preach this blessed, wonderful Word of God and great things will happen. Preach it. Be long-suffering. Mm. But also preach with confidence. Paul returns to where he begins, the word of God here. Here is where everything rises and falls. We are to preach this word and we are to instruct people in doctrine of this book. It is all about this book. It is the doctrine of this book. Opinions and beliefs and thoughts are irrelevant. What matters is what thus saith the Lord. The Bible is our sole authority. It tells people how to live, how to love, how to grow, and even how to die. Amen? The Bible is our sole authority. We're not to preach our grandma's beliefs. Or anybody else's. I've shared this many times. I had a sit, I sat with a man for the longest time, him and his family. And he argued with me certain doctrinal things of the Bible. And he kept saying, My grandma said. And I'm going, but the Bible says. My grandma said, but the Bible says. I said, Don't take my word for it. Get into the Bible. And see for yourself. You know, as I was growing up, and I grew up in the Southern Baptist Church, but as a young man, when I was 18 and through 20 years old, you know, and I, I, that thing about eternal salvation, I wanted to know truly, when you're saved, it's once saved, always saved. So I didn't ask anybody else's opinion. I got into the Word of God, and guess what I discovered? When you get saved, brother, you are saved. Amen. And you can't lose it, and nobody can take it away from you. And according to the word of God, you can't even jump yourself out of the palm of his hands. Nothing, it says, can pluck you out of his hands. If they can't pluck you out, you can't even jump out. Amen. Amen. Doctrine. It must never be compromised, but it must be proclaimed in power and heart-rendering authority. When it, is, uh, when it is, the Holy Spirit will take it. And we'll use it, illuminate it, uh, uh, illuminate it in the minds of the people. Just preach it, share it lovingly, kindly, but with authority too, knowing that who you're standing for. I think this mic is moving on me. And he'll do the drawing, amen? He'll draw all people to him. But I want you to know this too, Brother Jordan, preach with alertness and urgency. The first thing is because God and Christ are watching you. Again, we're going to go back to verse 1 here. 
I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. I want you to understand today that, Jordan, when you take the pulpit, Christ and God, the Father, are watching you. Here, Timothy is reminded that God and Jesus is observing his ministry, his preaching. He is also reminding them that one day that, that the preacher will have to give an account to the Lord for the ministry, for the proclamation that he makes. The preacher is to preach with the knowledge of this in view all the time that when we take this pulpit, God is watching us. He's watching. So the preacher is not to give an account to some deacon. In these days, they put deacon board. But is it called the office of a deacon? I remember when I come here. Where's Alyssa? She in here? She's out there. Hey, Alyssa. I preached a sermon, first deacon sermon. And uh, they had deacon board back there on the little thing. When I got done, she went back there and tore that thing off. <laughs> deacon board means authority. The deacons aren't in authority. The church is authority. The church is the authority, not the deacons. They don't rule the people and they don't rule the preacher. Matter of fact, we know by the word of God, it says that, uh, you know, that the church is to appoint that the preacher may appoint. You know what it says? You don't give an account. You're not held accountable to anybody but God Almighty. Do you understand? And that alone is enough, is it not? And think about it, for each and every one of us, our account is to God, not what people think. How we should do, how we should live. we got to give an account to God, and that's enough right there to keep us walking the straight and the narrow. So I challenge you, brother, that when you get in that pulpit, realize that God's eyes are on you, and you got to give an accountability for everything you preach in that pulpit. That's right, man. And that's enough. You don't need man's opinions. You don't need man to try to ruin you. I'll tell you what, I've had two preachers. Two pastors that come to me one time, telling me, sharing with me. One was in Forest City and one was here in Albemarle. They told me this, and it might happen to you. It hadn't happened to me yet, but it might happen to you. So this person come up to them and said, God sent me to this church to, to, to lead you, preacher, to, to tell you what to preach. That one Forest City said, really? Well, he sure didn't tell me you was coming. <laughs> But they had twice, a poor city preacher and one in Alabama, believe it or not. Where a person walked up and told the preacher that God had led them there to tell them what to preach. That ain't nothing but the devil, I'll tell you that. Brother, you answer to him and he leads you. Amen. 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 We don't give an account to man, but we give our account to Jesus. Why? He's going to judge us as to whether we preach the word of God or not. If we preach the, the ideals of man instead of God's word, we will be judged and condemned. If we preach a mixture of man's ideal and God's word, we shall be judged and condemned. And that enough, that ought to, to make us approach the, the, the pulpit with trembling in one hand and determination to sound out the king's message accurately as possible and clearly on the other hand. Sharing the message. The second line, because the time is coming when People will not endure sound doctrine. By doctrine, of course, it means the, the doctrine, the teachings, and the instructions of God's word, the Holy Scripture. And the only doctrine and teaching that is sound is that of God's word. The apostle uh, uh, here warned that, that time is coming uh, when people uh, will not endure sound doctrine but have itching ears and will uh, uh, accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. But we're seeing that today. It's happening all over the world today. And people are flocking to these preachers. Why? Because they're hearing what they want to hear. Because they can continue on in their life of sin and feel good about themselves. So what does that tell you? It tells you that's a man standing in the pulpit and he's not preaching with compassion, reprove, and rebuke. He's not preaching about sin. But in all honesty, I'll tell you, Jordan, 
That time is now that people are not enduring sound doctrine. We must continue to preach to those who will listen. Though the crowd gets small and the crowd gets smaller, and though there are churches that are shutting their doors, preachers must keep on preaching the only hope and the only truth and the only life that is this word of God, uncompromised, not watered down, not sugared down, just as it is. Let it be cut, let it fall where it may. Preach the word of God. Lord, I want you to know that the number one reason that pastors are wrong from churches today is because they preach the word of God. And that breaks my heart. The number one reason. Because they do not preach little sermonettes. Little feel-good messages. you got to preach it. The message you bring is literally a matter of life and death. You see, most people do not like hearing that Jesus Christ is the only Savior, that he's the only mediator, that he's the only person who can save, and the only way he can be acceptable by God is through his Son. They don't want to hear that. I was debating with a young lady about abortion. And she said, well, you know, not everybody believes that way. I said, well, they believe wrong. But not everybody believes that way. Then they're going to hell. Not everybody believes that way. They're going to stand before God. Not everybody believes that way. They will one day because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen? Amen. They will. Third thing there is watching all things. Watching all things. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things. That word watch means to be sober. It means to be calm. It means to be cool, collected minded. Maintain control and discipline. Sometimes that gets hard, Brother Jordan, even for a pastor. Sometimes we too have to clamp down on our tongue. Amen. The devil can get right under your skin. He can. You must continue to preach the word. You must watch. The minister is to be this way in all things. We are, we are to be calm and cool and collective in all things. The minister is to always watch and be alert. Why? Watch for the wolves that want to destroy the flock that God leads you to. And let me just say, Jordan, he will use, uh, the devil will take the littlest old thing, the little old seem to be nothing thing, and he'll begin to work mischief and heartbreak and hurtfulness and angry, just the least little bitty thing to destroy your congregation, to destroy a church. It's amazing. I shared with him last night one of the greatest difficulties I've had in, when I was in Far City. You know what it was over? Kids leaving candy paper in the pews. It just rubbed some of them wrong. I went, for heaven's sakes, don't worry about it. I'll pick it up. Amen. Just rubbed them wrong. I don't know why. I mean, the devil was using it myself. I know he was. But he'll use the look, don't, so don't overlook those little things. The devil will use them. But also watch because the wicked one wants to destroy your ministry. He wants to destroy you. He knows your weakness, and we all have weaknesses, Jordan. He'll come there, he'll come that way often, unexpectedly, untimely. I'm telling you. Isn't it amazing? The temptations always come at the wrong time, don't they? Ain't never a right time for temptation, brother. <laughs> Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jordan, I wish that when we get you down here on your knees, and that these men come around and lay hands on you and pray on you, I wish to God that we could put uh, some kind of shield, some kind of barrier upon your flesh, 
and say that your flesh will never desire, will never lust, but it's not going to happen. Even though you're ordained to share the ministry, to share God's word, that, that protection is not there. You've got to fight that fight. And it's a fight. There's a spirit. You know, I tell people, I've told this church, there's a fight all the time between the spirit and the flesh. Our flesh and our spirits always battling one another. Our spirit says, we want to do this. Our flesh says, we want to do this. Paul said, I do those things I don't want to do. And those things I want to do, I don't do. It's hard. But stay close to the Lord. Watch, watch, watch. Watch as you endure affliction. Now, look, look what he says there. Now, boy, that, don't that make you feel good? Everybody likes affliction. But watch that all things endure affliction. As you endure affliction, God, serving God is not the easy life in the world. It's not the easiest life. It, I'm telling you, you gotta, you got you to gotta put up with everybody else. Amen? All of them have to just put up with you, but you got to put up with all of them. You know, times of tempting to say, it's a good thing I'm saved. I'm going to be able to handle you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, isn't it? As you endure and face the enemy of your soul, the devil are, are striving to destroy you. Affliction is going to come. To add to the fact that God often uses hardship, though, to train us. And you will soon discover that hardship is a part of the ministry. It is. The afflictions of life help us to comfort others when they too are afflicted. So don't be surprised and fall out when the, the trials of life come your way. Don't get surprised. I, I had a, a boy, I went, they come to church for a while, him and his wife, and, and then they quit coming. And I went to see him, Jordan. And I said, brother, we miss you. What's going on? Well, I'll just tell you, preacher. And my life was going good until I started going to church. I said, uh -huh. the devil knows you're weak. He said, every time I go to church and I start going to church and I start getting in, he said, I, we got all these problems. This is breaking. That's happening and all these things. So it's just easier if I don't go to church. I said, oh boy, it didn't take much for the devil to get you out, did it? You see, the devil will use affliction to try to discourage you to push you out and away from the ministry. He will put wolves on you. I mean, I'm telling you what, they will hound you. And in the middle of the night, if you don't got the fire burning, they'll attack you in the middle of the night. I promise you. And the sad part of it is they'll come within the church. That's the sad part of it. Keep the fire burning. And the only way to keep the fire burning is keeping in his word, keeping on your knees, praying, holding his hand, walking with him daily, smiling at your enemies, doing their best to reach out and love them every opportunity you can. Because I want to tell you something, if there's anything the devil hates, it's kindness and love. Because he's everything but kindness and love. Mm. Watch. Watch as you do the work of the evangelist. Now, you know, you may not be called, and, and like I am, not called to travel around and evangelize, but we still, the ideal here is that, that, that we are to point people to Jesus. We are to, to reach people's heart and point them to Jesus. The goal of every part of our ministry and is, is the goal of every sermon should be that to point people to the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Watch and make full Proof of the ministry. This, this means to be in full measure. Full proof that it, it was used of a ship moving across the sea with its sail set, catching every ounce of the available breeze that was there. So the preacher is to set his sails, catch the winds of God, the Spirit of God, and allow Him to use you to the fullest capacity possible. This attitude is, de is depicted by Caleb in Joshua chapter 14 where the Bible says he wholly followed the Lord his God. In other words, he opened his sails and said, God, take me wherever you want me to go. Open your sails to the Holy Spirit of God, Jordan. Catch his wind. Holy means to set one's sails and catch all the available wind of God. 
Let nothing hold you back. Go for the Lord. Jordan, preach the word with conviction, with heart, like you mean. Preach it like Jesus is coming back today. Preach it with passion like you know is the only thing that will really change a life. Like a man, preach it like a man who knows he will have to answer to the Almighty. Jordan, you've been called in a special time. God has sent you to this world at this point in time for the needs of this world at this point in time. Jordan, we've never seen it like this before. I thought it was bad when God called me. But here I am growing near to the end of my ministry. And things are a lot worse. You're special. You're a peculiar person. God's got great plans for you in this time in which we live. There is so much darkness in the world. And whatever light you generate, know it's for him. Know it's for the good. And know that he will use it. He will use it. He will use you. Don't let the afflictions bring you down. Don't let the people bring you down. Don't let them keep you from preaching the word of God. If it costs you your job in a church, preach the word. Because you've got to answer to him. Don't water it down. Don't sugar it down for nobody. You've been called at a special time, young man. I hope you realize that. Congregation, this man has chosen to accept God's call. And in doing so, he is going to go into a warfare, a spiritual warfare. It's mean, it's ugly, it's hard. The devil will throw everything at him. And if you love this man as you say you do, I pray to the good Lord, you pray for him. You pray for him. When I was called to the ministry, they weren't burning down our streets and our cities. They weren't shooting and certainly didn't see the foul or hear the foul language you hear today. And all the vulgarness and all the rejection of our Lord and our Savior. You certainly didn't see all the acceptance of all those things that are evil as you do today. I challenge you as a church, this man needs our prayers. We saw him grow up and he's no longer a boy. He's been called the man of God to preach and to proclaim and bring light and hope into a dying dark world that needs it so bad. Jordan, I ask you to come. I ask you to stand before me. I tell you, it is impossible to overemphasize preaching, Jordan. It is even impossible to fully grasp the importance of preaching. So I charge you this day before this congregation, before God and his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, preach the word. Preach it with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Jordan, do you promise to walk worthy of the vocation which you are called seeking always to bring honor to the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord? And do you promise diligently and faithfully to perform the duties of a minister of the gospel with no thought of personal reward or honor, having as your primary motive the winning of persons to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, and the building up of the church of Christ through the inspiration, the teaching, the exhortation, the stewardship to the glory of God? Do you so promise? I, do. I ask you to take a knee. Friends, what we do here today continues a great tradition that began 2,000 years ago with our Lord's apostles. We have gathered here to lay hands on a Christian brother, a man called of God to carry his word to a lost and dying generation. And in doing so, we publicly acknowledge our own confidence in this young man, in his calling into the ministry and to his ability to carry out that ministry. With the help of the Holy Ghost, it is not small, no small thing but an honor to be involved in this service. 
At this time, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for this young man. God, I pray your blessings, your covering, your love, and your spirit to fill him, Lord. I pray from this day forward that God all will see the love of Jesus in his heart and hear from his voice the message of the messenger. God, help him as he goes, wherever you lead him. God, I pray that he will always surrender to your leadership. And Lord, always understand that he's at your mercy. God, bless him. Bless his family. And Lord, I pray for them too. God, family backing and family love and concern, Lord, for this young man. Lord, I still hear the words of my own mother. Who says all she wishes is those churches that I minister that they love her son. God, I pray wherever he goes, they love him. And they will listen to him and the message that you will proclaim through him. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you are an ordained man and you wish to participate in laying hands on Jordan, I will ask you to please get up and come around this side of the aisle. We'll come around, lay hands, and go back around this side. All who are ordained men, if you will, please come around. Yeah, all ordained men, deacons and pastors. Heavenly Father, again, Lord, I come to you, Father, and I ask again your blessings upon this young man. God, I pray that you use him, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you lead him and guide him. Protect him, Lord, from the wolves, Lord, that will be after him. And God, I pray that this church will continuously pray and uplift him. Because, Father, he is a part of this church. Where he goes, his church goes. May we never forget that. He was raised in this church and heard the gospel and did so many things, Lord, 
that's a part of this church. He will always be this church. As he goes, I pray, Lord, that you'll hold up that light. The banner of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ high. Never be ashamed. Lord, give him strength to stand when the times get hard. Lord, help him to really enjoy and cherish those wonderful times. But Lord, I pray you shield him. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Jordan, I'm going to ask you to go and uh, you know, want to just go on out, outside so that people can come, be outside the air, and uh, fellowship with you. God bless you. We love you. Wait a minute. You guys got something here. I do want to present you with a certificate of ordination and signed by all those that were on the council. Thank you. God bless. You will stand, please.